It's an honor for Microsoft Research to serve as a sponsor of this event uh, tonight. At Microsoft Research, our dual mission is to advance the frontier of computing and to vigorously transfer those advances into real world innovations. And that joint mission uh, is built on a culture where we tend to call out creativity, collaboration, and joy in computer science research. Now walking through the halls of the Computer History Museum is like walking through a timeline of joyful and collaborative creations. The hallways and exhibits show, literally show cascades of brilliant ideas on their way, typically, right at the edge of becoming world-changing computing pro products and experiences. And we at Microsoft Research resonate very deeply with the celebration of innovations and innovators by the Computer History Museum, and we're delighted to provide support to the museum and its events. Now, it's an honor for me, a deep honor for me, to present the Fellow Award to the extraordinary Leslie Lamport tonight. After graduating from MIT and Brandeis, Leslie worked at a variety of companies and institutions, including SRI, Digital Equipment Company, Microsoft Research, where he's currently a distinguished scientist. Leslie is one of computing's great theoreticians, widely known for his creative work on algorithms and for formal modeling and verification protocols that impose well-defined coherence on the behavior of distributed computing systems. These are systems where separate autonomous computers communicate through messaging interfaces. These contributions have resulted in improved correctness, performance, and reliability of distributing computing systems. Beyond the real world implication, real world uh, uh, outcomes of this work, Leslie's papers and his theoretical results on distributed systems, such as the Byzantine generals problem and the part-time parliament, are classics in computer science. Now, many of us going through grad school and even today writing papers know Leslie well beyond his work on distributed systems for advancing Donald Knuth's tech system with the development of the LaTeX document preparation system in the 1980s. This work revolutionized the process of document creation and has been widely accepted. Tonight, we honor Leslie Lamport and present a short film where he shares his contributions to computing. I look at, uh, at things from a very physical perspective and which I think gets me looking at the essence of problems and not getting confused by language. We had a bakery in the neighborhood and they had one of the little ticket servers that you took a ticket and the next number, you know, you waited for your number to be called. Uh, I suppose if I had grown up uh, in a later era, it would have been the Delhi algorithm. <laughs> uh, and that's basically what the uh, bakery algorithm does, except each process invents it, basically picks its own number based on numbers that other processors have. The obvious project for me to work on I suppose they had it in mind when they hired me was the SIFT project, which was uh, to build a fault-tolerant uh, computer system uh, to fly airplanes, essentially. It was a, a NASA contract. And that was uh, the work that, or the contract that led to the Byzantine General's work. What was there was the notion of the problem, namely achieving consensus in uh, the face of completely unreliable processors. So I uh, had an algorithm that would uh, tolerate arbitrary failures, uh, including processors that acted maliciously. If you look at you know, what LaTeX is, it's abstracted away a lot of the details of tech so that Using LaTeX, one thinks at a higher level, above the typesetting level, and at the document level. That's the goal. Uh, 
I've always found that the real problems, you know, the, the important problems, were motivated uh, by people in industry having things they wanted to do. Well, Leslie has really, I think it's fair to say, laid the foundations of distributed and fault-tolerant computing. And nowadays, when we have uh, machines with dozens of cores and, and data centers with hundreds of thousands of computers in them, this is just the way computing's done. And Leslie showed us how to do it reliably. Thank you very much. And I thank Butler for saying that beautifully and shorter and sweeter than I said it. The 2019 Computer History Museum Fellow Award is presented to Leslie Lamport for his contributions to the analysis and design of distributed computer systems and for the creation of the LaTeX document production system. Please join me in welcoming Leslie to the stage. And now for something completely different. <laughs> when I learned that I was going to be made a fellow, I thought about how I could thank the computer museum for this honor. The problem is that this is a computer museum. And although I've spent my life working in computing, I've had little to do with computers. Like most people, I just use them. I, and I can't see if there are any really young people here. If there are, I hope you had a chance to visit the uh, museum. Uh, but if not, you can use your phone to look up and find out what a computer is. <laughs> anyway, then it came to me uh, what I could do uh, to thank the museum. Now, the first computer widely used in people's homes was the IBM PC. And IBM also made electric typewriters. Now, if you're not as old as I am, you'll probably need to use your phone to find out what a typewriter was. <laughs> but all you need to know is that it had a keyboard. And that IBM typewriter keyboard was marvelous. It was sturdy, and pressing a key produced a little click which provided just the feedback you need to type fast and accurately. Now, I don't know if it's true, but that there was a rumor that when the head of IBM's typewriter division learned that they were going to produce the PC, he saw the handwriting on the wall. And to protect, protect the typewriter business, he insisted that the PC come with a crappy keyboard. <laughs> well, true or not, uh, the keyboard on the first PC, and to my knowledge, all other keyboards since then were crappy. <laughs> all except one. The keyboard that came with the second model of the IBM PC, the PC-AT. For some reason, that keyboard had the same action as the keyboards on IBM typewriters. And the first computer I had at home was a PCAT, which I got in 1985. Now let me tell you something about my background. When I was in junior high, I took a typing class. Now the class used old mechanical typewriters with very stiff actions. It almost took me two hands to uh, push down a key. So I developed very strong typing fingers. As a result, I've always been hard on keyboards. Back when I worked in an office, people in nearby offices used to comment on how loudly I typed. <laughs> Young people can use your phones to find out what an office was. <laughs> and as my wife will tell you, I often vent my annoyance at stupid software by banging on my keyboard. <laughs> and you know that there's an awful lot of stupid software out there. Now, I'm telling you all this so you'll understand how remarkable it is that I've used that same PCAT keyboard 
The one I got in 1985, with every computer I've had at home, including the one I use today. And it works just as well as it did in 1985. Now, I am never going to give up that keyboard. If they come to take away my keyboard, they'll have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. But someday that will happen. And for that day, as my way of saying thank you, I am bequeathing my PCAT keyboard to the new Computer Museum. Thank you.